Well, we've been out looking for the forest, my forest cattle, that have been on the country behind us. We went on quite a long walk. We've been out on right on the forest, on the blanket bog ground. We crossed over from really Holm Ridge round um, through to Nakers Hill, Green Hill, Red Lake Cairn, back onto Riders Hill again, and back. And we saw, we found them. Um, they're pretty um, extensively grazed there. It's big country. I've got a small herd, which is good in one respect, but but has trouble in other respects with time, and you know it's it's not easy to find them sometimes. Um, they they were Galloway cows, um, which I bought off an old family that were here that retired, and then I'm moving them over to South Devons now just because I have to in winter them, and they cost as much to keep in the winter as the South Devon does, and I make a lot more money on the calf, and they're still doing the job. Well, they're breaking up that purple moor grass, the millennia, which sort of is taking over at the moment. Um, it's it's allowing light to get to the to the base to the soil, which is allowing all the other plants to grow and have a chance. The forest of Dartmoor is the middle section of Dartmoor. It's a huge great common. Uh, it's over twenty thousand acres. Um, I don't know the exact amount, but it's it's a big country, big rolling country of millennia sort of dominated ground. Would have once upon a time had thousands of of red cattle from South Devon, West Devon, grazing it. Um, there aren't many commoners out there. It's, it's an isolated place. You've got to trundle across your home common to get there, which takes time. And, and we just said, I've only got sort of 20 to 30, and it takes as long to go and see them as it did 100. So um, I, this year is the first year I've put trackers on those cattle because I'm, I'm desperate to sort of, with working away from a farm and having the pressures of, of modern life, I can't spend all day looking for them over 5,000 acres on southern, southern part of the forest. So, and it's helped. It's t- telling me every 15, half an hour to 15 minutes where their location was. It, it's telling me their temperature, whether they're moving, which is always a good sign for an animal to be moving. <laughs> um, and uh, general health. Um, and it just gives me that rough location. Um, and it certainly made a big difference. And to me, it's saving, it's meaning it's a two hour job rather than a four or five hour job. And that is really critical with these small herds. If you're gonna keep the small graziers, you've got to make life easier. Yeah, the Healthy Livestock um, Initiative, as we call it, is working, the tracking is part of it. We're trying to work with the leared cattle, find out what those animals need to be healthy, managing the, the vegetation well, but also trying to help the animals be commercial as well so we've taken this vegetation samples we've taken water samples from the springs where they're drinking just to see if there's arsenic in one or you know heavy metals because some of them come from the mines the old mine workings that were here the tin mines and then once we've got those results back we'll start to make a picture of what's going on and how how that's you know building healthy livestock really um, there's a tick program as well where we've monitored ticks and, and what diseases they're causing in animals mostly sheep but there's several different sort of runs of it different angles that have been played with it and after i think it's three years we'll get the results together and should have some useful information because that's what the farmers really wanted they didn't just want a tick box exercise if they were going to put time into it they wanted to have something useful Um, and it also is evidence for for working with natural england you know some of the things they want you to achieve isn't always possible you know, through just grazing the blanket bog. Today it's a lovely day. The animals are walking uphill. They're getting the breeze through their tails. They're loving it. It's no good naturally than saying, I don't want them up there today. That, that's where they naturally want to be. And when the wind's blowing and the rain's pouring, they'll go downhill. And hopefully the trackers will prove that, that you've got to work with the seasons and with, with the weather. My home farm has species-rich hay meadows. It's either haylage or hay. Um, done from July and that's what's fed to those cows in the winter so they're having very natural vegetation it's not always the best quality but they are genetically grown on it so they should know what it is they spend their summer up here and all they're eating is this natural herbage um, of you know a hundred herbs you know to me that meat can't you can't get anything better you are what you eat aren't you and and that is what it what they're made of and you compare that to an American feedlot with nothing but omega sixes, I think I'm right in saying this. If I'm wrong, I, the meaning's still the same. Uh, omega sixes is clogging your heart every day you eat it, and omega three, which is what you get from this, is cleaning your heart. And they're totally different products, and we we've got to get that out there. 
and you're also you're eating the view by eating that meat you you're helping to create this biodiversity and you're helping to maintain it and if you stop eating it i'm afraid you use it or lose it we are the cows that are living off this you cannot keep the numbers you know you're, you're in by farm if you're farming it responsibly is is going to have less intensive agriculture but what you're producing is really really good food and, and less is more in a way if you're not going to buy as much you want to buy the quality just have a slightly smaller steak but pay a bit more for it and you're going to get all the benefits of that with your vegetables you know it's a balanced diet isn't it so you know i think that's the future it's a fantastic life the, the warm breeze the cows pleased to see me once they realized it was me um, no, 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 it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, and 99.9% and .9 of the population don't know anything about it. And that's why I should be so lucky to do it. But having said that, we've still got to make a living. And it's not like that when it's pouring with rain and snowing. <laughs> so it was beautiful today. And you must smile when it's beautiful. <laughs>